Hello there, Atheist Jr. here, your friend and humble narrator. And I am so excited today to introduce uh, my very special guest. It's Dave Farina from the YouTube channel Professor Dave Explains. So Dave is a, a science educator and an author with a background in organic chemistry. He was teaching, but he's now doing YouTube full time. And he's done videos about cosmology, biology, evolution, virology, even history and, and language. So Dave, thank you so much for agreeing to come on today. Uh, how are you doing? Pretty good. Happy to be here. How are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm just great. Uh, happy to be here. So um, this interview sort of came out because I saw that you were on uh, a friend of mine's channel, uh, Jackson Wheat, and I was asking him like how that collab sort of came about. And he was telling me that you would actually been working with um, Gutsit Gibbon or Erica on some scripts or videos. So um, what was your experience working with her like? Because she's great. I, I love Erica. Yeah, she's great. We just started. Uh, she's currently writing some anthropology scripts for me. So I, I just have a lot of topics that I want to do eventually. And so I occasionally reach out on various forums where us science communicators and and scientists also kind of talk and um, was like, I'm looking for writers and here's my document and here's all the like 20 different subjects I'm maybe interested in doing. And one of them was anthropology and see, she responded. I had a little like Google form and I was like, great, that would be perfect. And we talked and um, uh, and and I and and uh, what I told her is I really wanted to do something very broad because her expertise is sort of biological anthropology, primatology. I want to do kind of all of it um, and and it kind of chronologically so that it can link from my like evolutionary biology content seamlessly into uh, hominid evolution so primatology biological anthropology then into cultural anthropology just basic like freshman sophomore year undergrad stuff which obviously she is it's not her specific expertise but she obviously learned as an undergrad um and so just all the way up to present day so so biology but also cultural stuff and just, just really all that i i took one anthro class in college and thought it was really cool i didn't learn that much but i just like i just thought it was really neat and it's something i wanted covered on my channel and so when she agreed to to write those i got really excited so um i think she's she's just barely begun so we don't i don't have uh, much of the content yet but i'm hoping uh you know i don't know it, it, she can take her time six months or something maybe i'll start producing that content so it'll be good yeah that is one of the things that i like about your videos like um i've watched like you'll do one episode that's about introducing big bang cosmology and then in that episode, you're sort of like, okay, well, I'm just going to introduce like the topic, but in the next episode, we'll move on to like the actual evidence for it. And mm -hmm. you sort of go like in order and almost like it's different courses. So I think that's a really novel way of sort of introducing the subject rather than overwhelming people with everything in like an hour long video, you know, you can sort of break it up. Yeah. I like it broken up and chronology is very important to me. So the astronomy playlist in particular, that it's a, a while ago now, I think like five years ago, I started that one, but um, I was very excited to do it. And I knew early on what I wanted to do was go chronologically. So I wanted right away to start from the beginning of the universe and do the, you know, introduce the basics of big bang cosmology and then go into galaxy formation and then like system formation, planetary formation, uh, and just kind of go through the timeline of the of the universe because i mean i think a lot of co a lot of astronomy content starts with like the here are the planets in the solar system and it's like okay but just i don't know how how do they get there and like how do i to me it seems a little bit backwards so i i i went a different route with that one and i was just i, I wanted to do to go cr chronologically and then expand into into other topics so that was fun i, I love astronomy it's maybe my favorite subject so uh that was a fun one to make yeah it's uh, it can be very humbling to uh sort of study um so you originally started your channel on i guess on sort of a whim you were just recording yourself giving your organic chemistry lectures from memory basically and putting them on youtube but when was the sort of like moment that you really thought like okay i'm gonna take this more seriously and see if i can actually do this as sort of a career 
Yeah, so it was really just the failure of the band I was in at the time. So the reason <laughs> I started the channel was to get um, some passive income going because we were touring a lot. And so there wasn't enough opportunity to work and pay rent and things like that. Um, and so I launched the channel in January 2015. And then our winter tour at the end of 2015, so coming into early 2016, it just kind of fell apart. And so I was one year into the channel and I had, you know, I don't know, um, 10,000 through the beginning of 2016, I got like 10, 20,000 subscribers, something like that. So just starting to build up. And, um, so it's not so much that I knew it was going to be successful. It was more just that, like, I just, I, it was kind of a dark time. I didn't have anything else. I was really devastated by that band and not working out. And, uh, I just thought I'm going to put all of my eggs into this basket and, and I'll see, if this can become successful and then I can return to music later in, in a, in a more financially stable position. Um, and I just worked <laughs> relentlessly for, this is about six years now that I've been doing this at, at that pace. Cause the first year I, I, I was doing it in a very relaxed way. I was not posting a lot, but I just thought this is, this is what I'm doing until this works. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. And it did luckily. <laughs> so Yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay, so um, somebody was asking, uh, wondering if AJ has read anything. Oh, how do I pronounce this? Michael Hulebeck? Um, No, I haven't. Have you ever heard of this person? I have not. Okay. <laughs> um, and this uh, Krista Blake says, I loved Is This Wi-Fi Organic? Does Dave have any plans for another book? None specifically. Um uh, but who knows? I mean, life is long. Um, I think that once uh, I'm working on getting way ahead on the channel so that I can, I mean, I just, I work so, so much on the channel. My, my, my entire life is just, is, is just working on the channel nonstop. So once I, I I'm trying to restructure my life at the moment, and this year is going to be a time of a lot of shifting for me, a lot of, uh, rearranging my workflow, uh, because I'm trying to get away from that uh, I, I don't want to work like that anymore. It's been six years. I'm burnt out. I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm getting way, I'm backlogging a ton of material, like a year's worth of material so I can pull back and then I can kind of reassess and I can do art and I can think about writing another book maybe, or I, I don't know. Um, I, so, so, so short, short answer, maybe, <laughs> uh, though I'm not sure what it would be. Yeah. I, I think it, it's good to, um, sort of keep your um, creative endeavors varied like that. That should help, um, you know, getting burnt out. But yeah, I, I can't believe the channel has been around for that long. It's gone by fast, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been sometimes like, wow, okay, seven years ago. I got to <laughs> do something big for the 10 year anniversary. <laughs> we'll see how many subs I have at that point. Yeah. So um, I, I found it pretty interesting that you did a video that was actually talking about your Italian heritage. Um, have you ever done anything like 23andMe, like getting your um, ancestry tested? I have not. Um, I'm like slightly paranoid <laughs> about that stuff. Uh, some would find that surprising. But um, my sister did it uh, and she told me about it. I, I think, I mean, we're Italian, so it's like Italian for a long time. I think before that, um, I think there's some Spanish, I think some of them came from Spain like a few hundred years ago. Uh, but they, they've all been my whole family. I'm the first person in my entire family, not born in Italy, um, in recent memory in, in a few centuries at least. So, wow. um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we have a first super chat it, from Dave Dallafior. It says, we all love Professor Dave. So uh, that's that's very nice. Um, so I, I actually have done it, and I thought it was kind of a funny coincidence because I, I knew that um, I was basically like one quarter Italian just from the way like my mom's side of the family is. Um, my, my grandfather was um, from Sicily. And the funny thing is, is that he actually um, immigrated to America and started a family in Syracuse, New York. Also, that's oh. where my whole mom's side of the family is. So I yeah. saw your, your video. And I just thought that was kind of a funny coincidence. Yeah. My first memories are in Syracuse, New York. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. So, um, OK, some of my, my favorite videos of yours are 
um, sort of your more debunking um, the video or the channels like Electric Universe or Suspicious Observers, that type of stuff, the flat earth mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and some of these have pretty big communities behind them. Um, how, how do you find these type of uh, sort of conspiracy theory channels? Well, I mean, see, the thing is, they found they find me. I mean, Ben, the suspicious observers guy, I made my electric universe debunk and he attacked me and he sent all of his people to attack me and he emailed me and was like, you're a jerk, blah, 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 and was just harassing me so much. And just apparently didn't get like he didn't see what I did to the Globebusters because the Globebusters did the same thing. They harassed me and they made the live stream trying to make fun of me and everything. And like, th honestly, this is how half of this stuff comes up is somebody attacks me and tries to denigrate me. And then I go, well, I'm going to destroy you now because <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. So the Globebusters, I'm going to end your whole thing. And, and same with Ben. He just... He he harassed me and then I made a little response video and then just the 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 continued harassment, the perpetual daily harassment from his little minions. And then I made a, a Sky Scholar debunk because that guy's a clown. And mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't know when I did it that he's like his little protege kind of. I, I actually didn't even know that they were that they that they had any, any affiliation. Um, so that debunk caused a big other wave of his stuff attacking me. So I was like, all right, I'm done with this. And this journalist um, who had been following him for a long time, got in touch with me and was like, dude, I have so much dirt on this guy. Like, look at these, <laughs> like he had all this stuff. And so like I, I did, okay, I'm going to dig into his channel and show how everything he says is stupid and a lie. And I'm going to put all of this awesome journalism in there, outlining the Kickstarter scams and just like the complete fraudulence of all of it. Um, and uh, it's like, I don't know, it's just real satisfying. I'm glad that one uh, is getting a lot of views. And I'm also glad a lot of people, I get a lot of comments and even some emails that are like, wow, like I subscribed on a whim. I thought it would look cool. I had no idea I'm getting out of there or even more, not people who were just subscribing on a whim, but people who were like deeply entrenched in it mm -hmm. and was like, I was starting to go nuts and I thought the world was going to end and thank you for making this. And like, Oh God, I just subscribed. I'm washing him out of my mind. Like I can't, I don't have to think about this anymore. So that, and then, um, then the other stuff is more cultural. Like I like doing social commentary. So like, I like to go after con men, but I also like to observe, like I had noticed the misuse of the word quantum and the people who, who create scams based around that or, you know, medical realm quackery obviously bothers me a lot and that's rampant. So Sometimes it's just what I observe. And then the other half of the time is just people who piss me off and attack me. And then I just want to destroy them because <laughs> yeah, it's fun to do. Yeah. It's like, well, if they're going to drop the gauntlet, then, you know, I'm going to respond yeah. and then it starts a whole thing. Um, it's, so it's at this point, I hope it's like, you don't like, you should know what I do by now. So Globusters didn't know who I had never done it yet. Ben didn't do his research. And then James Tour didn't do his research because mm. that was a, an obliteration. So hopefully moving forward, people are like, oh, don't attack this guy because he'll annihilate me. And I don't want to bring that <laughs> wrath upon me. So I'll leave him alone. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, I just I love your confidence about about this, but it's true. You know, it's um, in, in your your flat earth videos. Um, you've said in some of those that you've been a little reluctant to make those type of videos instead of you know, your normal, more educational content, because then you might as well rebrand your channel to Professor Dave debunks. I personally think that sounds like an awesome idea. But yeah. would you ever consider like maybe starting a second channel to do that? Or? Um... Well, there's no point, I feel. Um, and, and and I've pivoted from that stance. And I am now embracing the debunks uh, and plan to do more. Um, okay. I'm taking a short break because I want to get ahead on a, on that academic content, as I said, because it's really hard to focus on a debunk when I'm trying to keep up with the release schedule of academic content. So I'm just going to get way, way ahead on the academic content. And then then I can actually devote myself. I, you know, if I have if I have a full day with nothing to do, great. I'm going to watch that video. I'm going to read that paper and I'm going to like craft the debunks um, and also ha have people help, you know, uh, offer some help with it. Um but I don't need another channel because I like the fact that some people discover me through the debunks uh, and then find their way to my academic content because they go, oh, I, you know, I didn't know enough physics. So I kind of fell for this a little bit. Let me watch his physics content so I don't fall for this stuff anymore. Um, and then people who 
find my academic content because they're studying for for school uh and then sort of like find that other stuff and they're like amused by that other side of me as well so it's just it's two communities that don't really know that i'm in both of them and find the other and uh, i like that crossover so uh it'll all be on one channel you know why split it up yeah i i think it's a great variety of content on the channel because if you have somebody who's sort of i guess fallen for this alternative style of medicine or sort of quackery science they can find that your video that debunks this stuff and then they can sort of move on to see okay what's the evidence that actually backs up the real science and then start to actually learn mm -hmm. you know yeah and, and just that's and the goal that absolutely and and if you it, like it really genuinely is the case that if you just have that basic freshman year undergrad or even in some in some cases high school level under understanding of physics or biology or whatever it is it's enough it really is enough to cut through like 90 percent of the crap out there some stuff is more clever and is better at disguising itself as real science and so that unfortunately is you know going to be harder to 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 sift through but it just there's no like i'm trying to make it easier than ever in human history to get that basic high school level understanding of these main scientific disciplines because we need it. I really want everyone in the world to have that. And, you know, it's like 40 tutorials that are five minutes each on physics or whatever it is. You can get through that in a week. And, you know, will you get an A? Would you get an A on a physics test? Maybe not. I don't know. But but like just you, just to have a general comprehension, a general understanding of this terminology, how to use it just a vague familiarity at least you know this is something that it's better than nothing it's way better than nothing um and uh it'll just help people not fall for these kinds of figures so i want to promote that i want to promote this scholarly attitude i want to uh you know help people want that and and seek it i i definitely agree um so i was watching your video about sky scholar and i i thought it was excellent um but I'm, I think you've touched on this in some of your videos, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit. Why do you think that there is this trend that's becoming more popular on the Internet of this narrative that all of the expert scientists are wrong and lying to people? And but my alternative theory is actually the truth. And you guys are all Neo in the Matrix. Like, why, yeah, why or, or they're Neo. So much? Yeah, right. Yeah, um, it's uh, delusional narcissism would be the diagnosis. So um it's the desire to feel like the most super special, smartest person uh, in the world. And um, the problem is there's all this science <laughs> and they don't get it. So the only way to, to, to align reality with that desire to feel smarter than everybody is to pretend that science is wrong, right? To take the entire edifice of science and just discount it, right? So either science equals the government and the government is bad, right? N neglecting the fact that science is done in academia. It is also done in the private sector, right? It's, uh, it's not, the science is not the government. That's insane. Anyone who thinks that doesn't know what science is. Um, but also the idea, I mean, that there could be this corruption over across all nations and all people and all fields and all of these things. Um, so, but, but even for someone who's not that delusional, it's an attractive narrative, right? We like this idea. Um, and, and unfortunately it is to some degree supported by the way certain media outlets report on science. You mm -hmm. get clickbait mm -hmm. titles that say everything we knew about physics is wrong. Click here and find out why it's like, no, not ever. What do you, that's just a ridiculous title. It's just clickbait. Um, but it is an attractive narrative. There's something about that psychology. Uh, I think it maybe also has to do with the fact that people can think um, all of that science that I didn't understand in school, either because I didn't apply myself or didn't interest me or whatever it is, that's okay because all of it is wrong. I didn't have to learn it anyway because it is mm -hmm. wrong. And I can look at this one thing and I'm caught up. I'm caught up to the rest of human civilization because I understand this new one cool thing that makes that renders all of prior science invalid. Um, so I, I don't know. There's a naivete there, but but anybody that 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 
espouses this kind of attitude, it, it's, it's a very clear indicator that they have never studied anything in depth ever. Because once you've studied one subject in depth, especially a science, whether it's chemistry or biology or, you know, I, chemistry is the only thing I've studied in depth. But because I've seen how in depth a subject can go, I know that all other subjects can have as much depth and I don't and I don't have access to it because I have not learned. I don't have a post, you know, a, a graduate education in, in any of these other uh, fields. And so I know how much I don't know because I know a lot about one thing. Uh, and so the only way to to be immune to that logic is to never have learned a lot about anything. Um, and unfortunately, that's that's science deniers. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was actually talking about this with um, somebody in my video I did yesterday about sort of the Dunning-Kruger effect and how <clears throat> somebody who is uh, new to a field will often think they know more than the expert. But when the expert, they actually know how little they know about a field because they've actually seen how, like you said how deep it goes yeah um okay so from efont 81 it says thanks you you guys are both awesome it says dave do you believe science in general um better coalesces with a progressive secular society and are you a humanist uh i think it does um remind me what a humanist is this is just somebody that uh, I think I'm, a, I think I am a secular humanist. I, I think I've read the definition of that before and thought that I am that. But refresh my memory. Uh, okay, it says it's a philosophical stance that emphasizes the individual and so social potential and agency of human beings. And um, I, I think it goes along with um, advocating for human rights, free speech, progressive policies, and democracy. And it's it does sort of go along with. Um, a secularism too. Yeah, that all works with me. Uh, I, I love all of that. And, and I think that, and I think therein lies the, the, the truth here, where, why science is better aligned with such a society, because I think that, a, that an overly religious and particularly a fundamentalist religious society is a very infantile civilization. It's somebody that wants daddy to come in and fix everything. And we've got a problem, pray to daddy, make maybe sky daddy will make the problem go away whereas a more uh, a, a, a more mature approach is to take reality into your own hands and say we've got this problem we've got this plague we've got pestilence we've got famine we've got drought we've got whatever these problems are let us come together as a species and try to figure out some solutions to these problems how are you going to do that of course you're going to do science right um and i think that um you know, the, 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 the bit that I've done in the way of learning about the history of science and, uh, you know, uh, ha has just been a great inspiration in terms of learning about that transition from a civilization that knew nothing uh, <clears throat> and just opted to opted for the divine explanation for, for everything. Uh, and of course had to suffer through incredible, <clears throat> uh, incredible pain as a result. Uh, the, the slow transition over many centuries to a civilization that is capable of, of, of learning about the reasons why things happen, the causes for, for phenomena and, uh, and, and beginning to find solutions. And especially uh, having lived through part of the 20th century and being intimately aware of, of how incredible the 20th century was in particular. If you look at what we knew in 1900 and what we knew in 2000, it's astounding. I mean, it's absolutely insane how much we developed as a civilization in one century um, to 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 see the emergence of uh, of, of medicines and and, and different uh, kinds of things uh, that have you know doubled the human the average life expectancy and raised the quality of life immeasurably and, and gotten us all connected and communicating across the world and um, it's it's incredible it's a crazy time to be alive uh, so yes I think. I, I like progressive. I love secular. I like humanism and I like science. So that's a lot of good words in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was really well said. I, I think I'm in total uh, agreement. And I, I think it's really interesting and not only the advancements that have been made, but how fast things start to start to accelerate. Like once you hit like the 1960s and 70s and the invention of the personal computer revolution and and you, you get Moore's law starting to take effect. And how fast everything started to, how technology started to increase and how it's not only increased our quality of life, but also the human lifespan 
with medicines and different things. And I think one of the things you, you touched on, it's critical to, if you want to solve problems that you're having, first of all, you have to understand what these natural phenomena actually are, you know, like, is thunder actually caused by Thor or is it yeah, a natural Thor. phenomenon? And then we can actually understand. I uh, mean, it, it was things. a great philosophical step to even acknowledge that they are natural phenomena, right? Disease is not demons, right? To, to go from disease is demons to, okay, we have these, uh, we have these pathological or etiological agents, whatever they are, where they, we, oh my gosh, there's bacteria, there's viruses, there's these things, there's, uh, you know, learning about the human body, all the systems in the body and what's going on, learning about the immune system. And, um, the, you know, it, it's, it's just, it's incredible. It really is amazing that we figured out all this stuff. Sometimes I, I just stop and think about how much we know. And so it's just, sometimes I'll get in a comment, uh, in the comment section or something, somebody's like, you know, we don't know that much. We know very little. And, and uh, you know, whether it's like a God thing, like God knows everything or just it's like, no, you know, so little. We <laughs> know a lot. Every individual knows so little, you know, especially so little. But <laughs> none of us know. I mean, every day I'm making content like on on, on subjects I didn't know anything about you know, immunology, I'm making immunology content or, or whatever kind of stuff I'm going to be making. Like, I didn't know a lot about it. I have somebody that's writing the content for me and a consultant checking my animations and everything like that. And I just, every day I'm like, wow, we know this. I can't believe that we know this. this is so cool. And then the next day, something totally different. I can't believe that we know this. And I just like, I, sometimes I don't get it. Like it's a, is it a cowardice that a lot of people exhibit? Like they, just this refusal to acknowledge what's plainly right in front of their face. What it is that we know as a species are the, the, that's that you would cower away from the brilliance and the, 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 the magnificence of that awe inspiring power and what we have done already and what we'll continue to do to improve our quality of life. Uh, with that, I mean, it's it's just the most important thing. It's the most incredible thing that humans do is figure out what's going on and use it to do things that help us. You know, it's really what distinguishes us from other species is our ability to do that. You know, yeah, so. I, I'm in total uh, total agreement. So, okay, this is the the subject that I I've been really excited to talk to you about. So, Jackson Rowe says, Dave, any plans for another Hoven debate? LOL. No, I'm not going to talk to that guy. <laughs> what a waste of time. What a waste of time that would be. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe, uh, no, almost certainly not. But but if I did, it would have to be like a live thing where he can't have like his little minions feeding him uh, yeah. answers. And uh, and I would, and it would have to be like, you know, in front of a big audience and uh, and I just <laughs> listen to him. Because <laughs> I, 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 it would be fun to um, to do another thing where I just don't let him, kish gallop you know but um mm -hmm. but but ultimately you know i just uh, i don't know i just don't want to talk to that guy ever again <laughs> that guy's the worst. yeah i i totally understand um i i actually re-watched the debate yesterday because uh, i was watching a lot of your videos to prepare my questions and stuff and i think personally i think it's the best debate anyone's done against kent hoven that's cool. just my opinion i Thank i you. love it um i i think um it's I, it just makes me laugh watching it because you're so <laughs> you're so pointed in that in that debate. And one of the things that's really good is that um, you really show how duplicitous Kent's line of questioning is because yeah. you really force Kent to sort of get to the end of the end of the rope on his questions because he'll say something and then, you know, you'll basically reply to it. And so you guys are going back and forth and you see how there's really no actual meaning behind the things he's asking. And it's right. like a rigged game where you can never actually win. <clears throat> have scientists created life? No, because only God can. Yes, they have. Oh, see, it takes intelligence. Like it's, it's true. I, I, you know, I did enough to expose his script, but unfortunately I should have pinned him a little more. Uh, I, I didn't look at enough of his stuff because like, I, I think, um, I kind of prepared all of my talking, all of my rebuttals to his talking points. But what I wasn't ready for was to rebut his talking point and demolish his talking point to his face and then have him just pretend I didn't and say it again. I was like, oh, my God, like the rock, like the you believe you came from a rock thing. Like I explained very clearly how nobody says that and nobody thinks that. And then he just kept saying it. <laughs> I was like, 
<laughs> I'm gonna I'm good I just I'm losing my mind here <laughs> so that I wasn't ready for um uh and I would be an, another time but uh I just I don't know I think it'd be kind of a waste of time <laughs> I'm, I'm I'd rather go after um because the thing is uh I get a lot of comments on there that are like I'm a Christian or even I'm a creationist and Kent is an idiot <laughs> and and can't lost this debate and i'm like you're even a creationist and you're saying this whereas those guys tend to uh, like i get a lot of like kind calm creationists that are like you should check out so and so and i'm like i hate to break it to you that guy's also a fraud that guy's also just an apologist um but they're more polished they're more put mm -hmm. together they're not as sleazy they have better sounding lies um they are also lies nonetheless so i'm actually more interested in going after those figures because those are the ones that i mean kent has his little like farmhouse of minions but there are other creationists that are not susceptible to kent's tactics that are susceptible to the tactics of these other more polished apologists i'd rather take my time and deconstruct those figures so that those types can start to see that they are being lied to by by all of these figures across the board so that's I'm actually this year, once I get ahead on the academic content, that's probably the first thing I'm going to focus on with the debunks, those mm -hmm. uh, those types, those types of creationists. A polished apologist. That's a tongue twister. Yeah. OK, <laughs> uh, uh, I have a super chat from Dave Dalifior. It says hit the like or else you'll receive Kent's creation series. Um, <laughs> um, and OK, I have a, from Paul Kamish, it says. I showed my next door neighbor, Professor Dave's vid on vaccines and she got the vaccine. So thanks, Dave. That's Score. Awesome. Score one for rationality. Cool. Yeah, that's that's great. I love that feedback. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to know that, uh, you know, how many people, one, 10, 50, 100, I don't know how many, but it, it's it's something. Um, so that's why I do those. Yeah, it is, it is great when you get these type of comments because I get comments from people that are really nice. Um, but when you get a comment that shows that some of your videos are actually making a difference, because I've, I've done quite a few videos about Kent. Um, I like to do videos where I'll, I'll show clips of him saying one thing and then another video where he just contradicts himself or just shows that he's a liar. Or I do like debunking videos of him. And one of the comments I, I got that I, I always remembered is that somebody told me that they were a creationist, like you said, and that they were actually planning to drive down to Dinosaur Adventureland and stay there. And then they saw my videos and changed their mind. So nice. I, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important. I mean, I, I get a lot of comments, especially the flat earth stuff where they're just like, what's the point? Like, you're not going to change anyone's mind. It's like, no, but you do. It's important to have that counter that you, to, to counter the narrative. It's important. It's important to neutralize misinformation. You know, people have to be doing this. I think that's why science communication is has exploded as a as a career choice in the past few years, because we're realizing how high the stakes are for the public to understand science and not to fall for con men and hoaxes and general misinformation. Um and scientists are too busy to do it, right? It's and they, it's they're doing science. They have to do science, and it doesn't bother me that that most scientists don't want to be science communicators. It's a completely different skill set. It's very time consuming. You do the science. I don't want to do it. I find it very boring, and I'm so glad that you like doing it. So please keep doing that and only that. Let me do this, and my colleagues let us do this. We'll be the ones that sit here all day and try to figure out, OK, this is the science. This is the narrative that these people are believing. Let me figure out why. Let me figure out the origin of this of this narrative of this false narrative. Let me deconstruct it. Let me explain it back to those people exactly why they fell for it and exactly why it's wrong. Right. Both of those things are important. Um, and let me be the one to to bridge the gap, you know, um, and and as many others as are willing to take this on because it's very important i think it's 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 an existential crisis what we have going on right now that most people can't seem to figure out what is real and what is true so <clears throat> yeah well i i love the uh idea that uh nowadays people have um the resources with um you know having you know powerful desktop computers and all of the educational resources that are on the internet that sort of everybody can be an educator or a science communicator 
um, and sort of get their message out for better or for worse. You know, some yeah. people aren't, you know, um, communicating messages that I would agree with. But um, so I, I do videos that, you know, um, where I will sort of watch these creationist videos and try and respond to what they're saying with the, the I think, the proper science that debunks them. And a lot of times you end up responding to the same arguments over and over again. And one of the most annoying arguments that I keep hearing is this is something that Ken Hovind especially says is he says that all of the matter in our current universe, like now, was in a single point at the Big Bang. And I always have to explain that the early universe, it was too hot and dense for atomic nuclei to form. So there was no solid matter. You didn't have solids or gases so there's no stars or planets until much later and i like how you described it which is like a bunch of clip art planets coming out of an explosion graphic um like a bluey graphic yeah. yes like a bluey graphic <clears throat> uh, is there a, a certain argument that you come across that you find especially annoying from these types i mean yeah that i mean i think just that is a shining example of the of the place of supreme ignorance where creationists, most creationists are coming from when they try to deny science. That's exactly it. Um, I tried to put it in a very succinctly, in a succinct, uh, funny way. But yes, when you, when apologists, when the lowest tier apologists are talking, are trying to, to discredit Big Bang cosmology, they, I, I've literally heard some of them make the argument of like, well, but if there's an explosion, then how come this planet is going this way and this planet is going that way? Those planets didn't form for 10 billion years after the beginning of the universe. What you're saying is it, you're, you have no clue what you're talking about. You don't know the first thing about what you're talking about. That's why I wanted to make one tutorial. It's pretty long, but um, of, of Big Bang cosmology from T equals zero to you know the formation of the 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 when stars were first forming just to kind of go over like no like there was no matter of any kind there was no matter it was some energy energy once it cooled down it went once uh once once it cooled down enough that congealed into uh quarks and leptons and the and just the how many gradations there are to get to anything that we consider to be you know recognizable matter right the we, we didn't get any is we, we didn't even have uh, atoms forming for 380,000 years. Like it was just a long, it's just very gradual thing. Um, and, and you could learn all this in 10 minutes if you wanted to, uh, you, you have the internet and they just don't do it. Um, and that translates perfectly to, you know, just the dumbest talking points. Why are there, you know, why are there still monkeys, uh, these kinds of classics? It's like, you don't just like learn anything, learn anything. And then talk to me about this. Like the, the 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 degree of willful ignorance is just astounding. Sometimes, you know, I know way I know more about the Bible than you know about biology. Actually, in some cases, I know more about the Bible than you know about the Bible. Like that's how willfully ignorant you are. <laughs> it's just it it's it really boggles the mind. But um, that's the reality of it. That's the reality of the you know the way the a certain type of person that that we have to be considering and dealing with so definitely okay so i have a super chat from <clears throat> ian chan official it says wi-fi is organic some book said this thing <laughs> <laughs> yep no pesticides involved yeah yeah um so i i, I have a couple of comments from asking uh, if if it was still a strawberry or not um so could could you uh, i never got to uh actually hear you explained when you debated kent about you were trying to tell him about strawberries and and polypoidy can you like actually explain that for a second because kent was just yelling the whole time and i couldn't really hear anything all all i was trying to do was to show examples of very rapid speciation and polyploidy is something that does that and i was trying to explain how octoploidy produced strawberries so strawberries are octoploid um and and that part really it sucked because he enraged me so much that i couldn't like i couldn't get that out i couldn't like I mean, I did a little bit because he was like, he was trying to pretend to know what I was talking about. And he's like, oh yeah, I've seen those octoploid strawberries. They're all big. And no, 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 no. Strawberries are octoploid. That's what like, and, uh, and I, I kind of got that out a little bit, but then he went into like, or is it still a strawberry? And like, I just couldn't like, 
it was just so stupid. That moment was so stupid that I couldn't like articulate how stupid it was. I did a little bit, but I, it was just like, you're not understanding. This is the event that produced strawberries. So I don't know, agriculture and like, um, you know, uh, the, the way we guide the evolution of dogs and things like that. These are all great, great examples of showing um, the diversity that that can accumulate very rapidly. Um, but, uh, he just, yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't getting it. So <laughs> that, that is so frustrating because it's one of the things that he, he does in the debates where somebody is so like dumbfounded by his stupidity. That That's he, all it he, is. He actually frames that as that you actually don't have a good response, but it's just like, I'm so shocked by the stupid thing you just said. Yes. That yes. That, I that, can't, I can't form words. <laughs> That's why it's like. I feel really bad for any scientist who has ever engaged with him because Kent takes the position that he's won every debate he's ever been in. He's won none. He's never won a debate. It's just that those scientists, like <coughs> some biologist is, is not primed. They're not, they have no idea who this guy is. They're not prepared at all for just the, the, just the garbage that is about to come out of his mouth. And they're just like, I don't even know what to say to this guy. Like there's no, and so he's like, ha ha, I won. It's like, no, dude, like you can't, there were so many moments where it was so clear that it's like protista. Is it a protist? Okay. Protista is an individual organism. Protist is a defunct. Like, like, there's no point in like trying to explain, taking five minutes to explain some biological concept to him and whoever's watching for him to just go, that's not a thing. Is dog still a dog? Like that's the game he's playing. He's just, he's, he's preaching to the lowest common denominator who has no idea what I'm saying, what he's saying. So they're only going to like, is, do, do dogs produce dogs? Like that's the only thing that they, that is like a simple enough sentence with words they know to like latch onto and they want to believe him because Jesus. So that's, that's his tactic. That's his grift is I'm going to say things that are wrong, but make sense to people who don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so, yeah, <clears throat> that's, that is uh, so frustrating because again, he, he will say stuff like, well, okay. Answer yes or no. Did the dog come from an amoeba? And it's like, I can't answer yes or no to that because first I have to explain why that question it makes stupid. no sense, <laughs> you know. He loves to say "come from," <clears throat> yeah, because it makes it sound like direct lineage, you know, like direct offspring. <laughs> yeah, so, um, that was I, another I, frustrating part. Is like I, I, I was just so annoyed by how stupid the questions were that I neglected to take the time to explain to his viewers why that's a dumb question. So I, I should have taken the time to just kind of go, look, it's it's stepwise. There are millions upon millions of iterations in between these things, you know, and um, so I didn't do that. But I mean, it, you know, it's not like these people have heard this all many times anyway. So um, it's just uh, it's just blanket science denial. I mean, it's very easy to go. I don't understand it. So it's not real. But um, we were supposed to learn this in ninth grade, and we all did uh, if people were paying attention. So I, I guess I, I Kent didn't. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. From okay, from Wyatt Mays for five dollars. It says I would like to see AJ, Aaron, Ra, Dave, uh, Paul, just to name a few, surround Kent on all sides to see if he really could debate you all with half of his brain. <laughs> <laughs> if if he's currently using all of his brain like i know you said that people don't actually use 10 percent of their brain but i think we might have to make an exception with that. <laughs> <clears throat> i mean that would just be fun for the after party so uh yeah why not <laughs> yeah um i i got to meet Aaron um in person uh, like i said at faithless forum and it, it was really cool getting to meet him and so i i was talking to him in the morning and then a little bit later in the day, I, I see him. He shows back up to the conference hall, and he's just dressed heads to toe as a pirate. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's uh, that's just how Aaron is. So he, you yeah. know, it's great. Yeah, um, yeah, he's a cool dude. Yeah, and I I I did a video where I interviewed him like this, and I've um, collaborated with um, Paul Agia. Have Have you done a lot of um, collaborations with people on YouTube, or do you mostly do just videos on your channel. Yeah, not really. I mean, collabs in the sense that I hire writers, but um, 
No, because I don't really make, I don't really do interviews on my channel. I don't really do this kind of stuff. Um, we'll see, like, as, you know, if, if I end up really ramping up the debunking because I have enough time to do so, maybe that will lead naturally to, to collabs. But, um, yeah, I haven't really been compelled to do so. I'm open to doing so, I suppose. But, um, yeah, I haven't put too much thought into it. Okay, so there's uh, from Rune uh, Norderhog, I think, as for $5, it says, when dealing with creationists, always expect them to use old-fashioned terms such as animalcules while pretending to be a scientist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they can't <coughs> definitely, he, he has a lot of outdated uh, slides. Like, I was watching him talk about carbon dating the other day, and I'm like, all of these sources are from before I was born, you know? Yeah, or his thing with the with the heckle uh, embryos. It's like, dude, this is 150 years ago. Like, we can see embryos. We can see what they look like in real time. Like, what are you whining about this thing from 150 years ago? We see what they look like. <laughs> they have yeah. vestigial tails, man. They have not not tail bones, tails. They have vestigial tails. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> even even if okay, it's like even if this guy lied. Science is not based on what one person thinks or doesn't think. Yeah. Um, so even if he did lie, then it doesn't matter because we're not. And, and I would actually say that I would agree with Kent that if people are using drawings and textbooks, then they shouldn't do that because we can have micro photographs now. <laughs> so there is no yeah. reason to, to use that because that's always going to be more accurate than a drawing. You know? Yeah, but they don't use the drawings. He he finds old old textbooks that have that he, he he you know he shows textbooks that are made for middle school students to like pretend that the dumbed down version is like what all the scientists are talking about. I don't know. He just he has a lot of tactics like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, this has really <clears throat> gone by quickly, but um, Dave. Where can people find you? Um, are you just on YouTube or are you on any other social media? Like, where can people find your stuff? I mean, I'm on Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. I don't really, like, do it <laughs> much. Uh, I don't like social media. I'm just young enough to have it, just old enough to not like it or care about it. Um, it's So it's mainly the YouTube uh, where I focus all of my efforts. But, uh, yeah. Okay. And... um. What are you, uh, are you working on anything right now? Or do you have like a, a, a new video planned uh, to come out soon? Uh, yeah, so I, I release three a week, so so quite a lot. Um, what I have coming out right now, I just started my uh, my uh, <clears throat> inorganic chemistry series. Uh, I, next one that's coming out is I'm starting my geology series. Um, I'm working on, I've got zoology continuing. I've got pharmacology continuing. Uh, some more Italian. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? Uh, yeah, economics, psychology, other ones coming soon, more mycology, more physics, more immunology, philosophies coming up, forensic science, all kinds of good stuff. Wow, you, <laughs> yeah, you, you really um, provide like such a variety of topics. I, I think it's quite impressive. Um, yeah, it's fun too. I learn a lot. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. So uh, from Pterodactyl Hunter, it says Kent is the smartest person in the world. Uh, you must be talking about a different Kent then. <laughs> <laughs> in his own world, in his own mind. Yes. He's the smartest person on the flat earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I, I want to say thank you so much, Dave, for coming on and talking with me. I think it was, it was a lot of fun. And, and I think you gave some great responses. So um, thank you for that. Yeah, happy and, to do it. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, and thank you to all the people in the live chat. Um, so you guys just uh, like this video. Go and subscribe to Professor Dave's channel if you haven't already. And yeah, I will just uh, see you guys in the next video. <laughs>